to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's football time. I almost forgot. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. You should always know. I try to keep my. I try to keep it short. That should be the signal. Ah, the emergency alert. I I appreciate the that. flare into the sky saying it's football time. In 2020, you could just assume yeah, that there's a football <laughs> game tonight. That's true. That's true. We do have ChristmasFootball.com coming up pretty soon. We do. Welcome into the show. Thursday, December 10th. Huge matchup show today. Starts of the week. News we have to talk about. I think we're all still reeling a little bit from yesterday's episode. Oh, man. I, I feel like I have Super Bowl hangover. Yeah. From yesterday. So but I'm, you won the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. What, yeah. But I'm art, I, you party when you win. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I feel I, I'm, I'm trying to bring the thunder for the, the next thousand, but it is... I'm I'm the tank's a little empty today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, goodness gracious, we our, our thank you to the Foot Clan cannot be large enough. The uh, and to the producers, yesterday's show was unbelievable, and the response has been uplifting and wonderful to know how many people out there. You know, look, where are your best friends? We've been with you for years or or maybe weeks. Apparently, uh, we're their best friends. Yeah, and which uh, is so amazing. It's just really cool the the relationship you can get through podcasting and. Uh, you know, we were all hit with an emotional Mack truck of surprises <laughs> yesterday, and so thank you. Yeah, we counted down the top five moments in footballers' history on the show yesterday. We had a bunch of impromptu, uh, what was it, spontaneous congratulations, that, <laughs> and then the wives popped up on the screen, and it was over. It was done. But mm -hmm. well, we've got playoff football to get into, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it on the show today. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Did we hit the 200K mark on Twitter yesterday? Are we there? Oh, I will go check. It's, I we know were very it's, close. It almost timed up perfectly with show 1000. So uh, that was kind of cool. But check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. The Start Sit tools up there to help you out this week. We do have a Thursday night football game tonight, which will be uh, a fun watch. Breaking news. We did it. We hit 200,000. We did it. Thank you, everybody. All right. Mike wanted to continue surprising us today. That's, that is correct. Stay on your toes. No, that's cool. That's awesome. So, all right. Uh, without further ado, let's keep competing in this <laughs> very exciting segment. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. Jason's looking at me funny because he sees me shaking my head, and that's because with this segment, we're we're picking our taking it up to 100 player for this week. Now, we're also keeping track of the results on the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is a little bit uh, nebulous. Like, we pick a player that has been struggling, someone in the periphery, not, you know, it doesn't take much to say Tyreek Hill's going to take it up to 100. So that's not eligible. That type of player is not eligible. Changing my player? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. Travis but, Kelsey. But but word on the street this week is that this this taking it up to 100 segment is now connected with a trophy and an award at the end of the year, and so it's become more competitive. And so I'm just like I'm shaking my head because I wasn't as concerned about winning until I found out there was a trophy. <laughs> and then so then I'm doing the doing the math, and now I know that Mike's ahead. He's got six wins. It is I have six, five. five. It's six, five, four right yeah. now. Mike, Andy, myself. And really, I mean, Mike's been on fire three out of the past four weeks. He's hit. So pressure's on, guys. That's right. Let's make some diamonds. Uh, so, Jason, who do you have this I'm week? Oh, still my God. You're darn right. I'm still, I love it. I'm still going deep. Of course I'm not, you do. I'm not going with these top my 24 guy. guys. Uh, at all. We don't talk about that anymore. I'm Andy. going with a player who has been struggling as, as I continue to do with this, taking it up to 100. Someone that um, y you're, you're wondering if you could start, and I believe that this is the week for DJ Chark. Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon is what you're saying. Yes, Mike Glennon is Mike his quarterback. Glennon. That's why he stinks. It's not because of DJ Chark. DJ Chark is a good player. But you want to know who... Glennon. You, Mike Glennon stinks. You want to know who else stinks? Sounds like ghosts. 
Who else thinks, Andy? Are you wanting me to say Gardner Minshew? No, I'm oh. wanting to say <laughs> the Tennessee Titans defense. Yeah. Because Baker Mayfield just threw four, four million yards and four touchdowns in the first half. <laughs> he threw the yards through last, the air. Last week. And I, look, I'm, I'm targeting Tennessee. I think My Chark is talented. Goodness. This is a guy that I think takes it up to 100 this week in a, in a great matchup with talent. The nice thing about Mike Glennon being so terrible is that he won't be under pressure. There is no pass rush from the Tennessee Titans, and that's the only thing that can possibly give Mike Glennon enough time D to deliver the ball to a wide-open DJ Chark. Oh, DJ Chark, you know who he hangs out with is Hollywood Brown because both uh, of them can sit around and decide that they can't catch the ball six feet over their head. Mike. Who who did I replace in this taking it up to 100? Hollywood Brown. That is right. I okay. had Hollywood Brown right. in there. And uh, Mike Glennon's averaging over 250 passing yards. Look, that's so not that's not a challenge. If yeah, you're not is. Cam Newton, that's not hard in the in NFL. Today's NFL. I, I, I don't know. That's o that's over 4,000 yards on the I, season. I just want to be clear. You both love Mike Glennon. That's what I got out of that. That's fine. All I right. Look, just he, have a thing for next. Yeah, he can see. He can see over the offensive line. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go Kareem Hunt this week. All right. It's been three straight weeks uh, of struggle for Kareem Hunt. He has not been even an RB2 for your fantasy team since Nick Chubb returned. Baltimore on paper, it kind of looks like, okay, that's a questionable matchup. But he's had, you know, he's going to get 12 plus opportunities against Baltimore this week. They're beat up. We saw success from Ezekiel Elliott last week. This is a little bit of talent or a lot of bit of talent a lot of opportunity and a little bit of wishful thinking because I'm starting him against Mike this week. So take, uh, I think Kareem Hunt gets back into the end zone this week. And I think this is a player you will be starting in dynasty, Andy. Oh, you have the bye week, I yeah. suppose. But I'd like to start him. Robbie Anderson from the Carolina Panthers. Right now, there are only 12 wide receivers who have more than 900 yards. Robbie Anderson is one of those players. He is quietly having an incredible season because he's not scoring touchdowns. The targets have remained true for Robbie Anderson. It just hasn't been happening again because the touchdowns haven't been coming. It finally happened. Uh, it finally hit two weeks ago, so right before the bye week. DJ Moore has COVID, unfortunately. He also has that ankle injury he suffered right at the end of the game before heading into the bye week. The Denver Broncos, the matchup. Now A.J. Bouya is suspended. Uh, like Robbie Anderson is set up here to receive a very healthy target share. I completely agree, and I will throw Curtis Samuel in there because absolutely. I think, he, I, the he, reason I didn't go with Curtis Samuel is simply because of we don't have the one hundred percent all clear. clear yeah. Because he is on the COVID list for a contact trace because of hanging out with DJ Moore. As far as we know, Curtis Samuel doesn't have the virus and should be cleared to play. But this uh, at this point, I got to make my call, and I'll go with Robbie. That'll that'll be a perfect segue into our news to talk more about Carolina. A reminder, take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how these up to 100 picks performed. I got to – it's it's a struggle because I don't want to see Mike fail with Robbie Anderson. I'm a big Robbie Anderson fan, but I, I do want to beat Mike. <laughs> but there's a trophy. But there's a trophy, <laughs> yeah. News and notes from around the league. All right, that transition to uh, another Panther in the news here. Christian McCaffrey. I got to get Jason's reaction to this oh, because my. he's just got to be <laughs> beside himself. Limited in practice on Wednesday. But guess what, guys? It's not the shoulder. It's, uh, it's the thigh. Someone get this man some zinc or some iron. What is going on with this, this is body? This is the full uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes situation for Christian McCaffrey. He tweaked it last week, according to Matt Rule, and it tightened up on Wednesday. I mean, there there might be some real question around I, his activity. I am, I, I am. <laughs> let me just uh, describe what knees I look and like. Toes, knees and toes. I am an ostrich, and my head is inside <laughs> of the ground because I refuse to listen or believe this. I've spent the entire season making sure I make the playoffs despite losing Chris McCaffrey for the majority of it. Now I'm excited because I get him back. He better be out there, <laughs> and he better be ready to go. I can't handle this. Are you a full ostrich where, like, he's just going to be in your lineup regardless? There's, like, uh, he's... <laughs> it, I, I'm, I'm living and dying with Chris McCaffrey. I'm telling you. If he's if active, he's, he's in my lineup. If for some reason he doesn't play, 
And Curtis Samuel doesn't play. It's like Robbie Anderson, Mike Davis time. Yeah, big time. I'll tell you what. Since Christian McCaffrey stole my AWS gig, things aren't going so oh well for him. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. Christian, I'm looking at you. Oh my good. Is that the. Eh, never mind. That's not the worst part of 2020. <laughs> okay. Mark Andrews has been activated from the reserve COVID list. That's great news. Yes. Um, selfishly, I, I hope maybe one more week off because Mike's got Lamar Jackson, but this is good for Lamar Jackson. He He's a go-to receiver. He's got the kind of frame that Lamar Jackson needs to be able to uh, – the catch radius necessary for Lamar <laughs> this year. He, he likes them big. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> James Conner's been activated from the COVID list as well. Benny Snell did nothing to to take any type of role away from James Conner. I feel like Benny Snell did serve a purpose, which was to shine the light for the Steelers mm. on James Conner and say, we need that guy back. Yeah, and, and James Conner has not been great, <laughs> and yet so much better. So much better. All right, yesterday we talked about it. There was optimism about Joe Mixon that has been squashed. He has been ruled out for week 14. Now Zach Taylor saying there's a possibility he plays again this year. He ain't I playing. am now moving to the point of thinking he's not going to come back. I, I agree. I mean, why? Yeah, I mean, we, we saw this last year with uh, A.J. Green, you know, where it was like this staff, oh, yeah, oh, next next week for sure, maybe. No. Okay, well, he's done for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Tyree Kill missed practice due to a non-COVID related illness. We'll keep you up to date with him. He should should be all right, I suspect. Debo Samuel, Bruce Foot going to miss practice. I think they're just going to give him. They've been doing this. They're just going to give him time yeah. off. They need to. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So they can have him be awesome on yes, the football field. I agree. They he is Debo a Samuel hater. He's got a Rawls Royce problem. Yeah. Do you remember Thomas Rawls? Yes. Thomas Rawls ran like his tail was on fire. I mean, you knew he was going to hurt himself. Yeah, I mean, he's too violent. You, you, there's, there's very few players, if any, right now in the NFL that play like Debo Samuel. Right. Debo Samuel plays legitimately with no fear. No fear at all of any repercussion of harm of going 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's a reason why nobody else does that because you get hurt. Debo Samuel could have a defensive lineman 20 yards in front of him, and Debo could easily go around. Like He could outrun this 300-pound guy, and he's like, nah, -uh, not Debo. I go through you. That's right. And they're like, Debo, go around. Hey. And he it's very <laughs> easy. And he just waves them off. <laughs> Josh Jacobs, sideline for Wednesday's practice. Hey. Hey. Ezekiel Elliott, I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott was listed as limited for Wednesday's practice with a calf issue. He's been kind of dealing with some stuff for a few weeks. I expect he'll be back there, although the, yeah. the wishful thinking Tony Pollard manager over across from me at the desk is uh, thinking other things yeah, for the playoffs. Of course, I am thinking those things, but I have no, no realistic delusions yet that Zeke is going to miss. Uh, Justin Jackson designated to return from the IR. Oh, my. Maybe the Kalen Balaj window is closing because if he was activated, he, he will get the work. You would think so? Yeah. Or some of it. Yep. Denzel Mims away from the team for personal issues. With the COVID protocols, he may not have time to be cleared for week 14 because he had to travel out of state for the uh, the family issues. So Jamison Crowder becomes more important and obviously Brashad Perriman, mm -hmm. uh, the downfield threat. Yep, and then the Bears recently this morning announced a positive player, uh, COVID-19 related. We don't know any further details on who that is. They're quarantining. The game is on as scheduled as of now. Cam Newton's going to play. Cam Akers removed from the injury report. He's going to play. That's your Thursday night All football right. updates. A reminder, take those Thursday night players out of your flex position. We remind you every week because it's important and it's easy to forget. So into the forecast we go. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. All right. I'm sure you guys are going to be glued to the television for this one. Dallas Cowboys 3-9 and nine, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals at 2-9-1. Cowboys 3.5-point favorites. It's a 42.5-point over-under. I'm with Jason. I thought the offense showed me enough to where I have confidence in Dallas in this game myself. 
And, uh, you know, Andy Dalton, revenge game. You guys ready? Re- ready? Revenge game. I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, he, he's he got to be mad, right? Uh, I mean, he's not, yes. not that yes. he's not that he's mad, but you're a professional athlete, and the, the Bengals said you're no longer good enough to be our quarterback. Yeah, and so, that's yeah. going – yes, of course. He's still – he's a professional quarterback. Also, he's a human. And right. And he got fired for not being good enough, and now he's the starter across the field. Absolutely. That doesn't mean you you bump him up, but he's – Yeah, when you get fired for not being good enough, you don't necessarily <laughs> have the ability to go get the other team. But he is definitely uh, not happy. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be Andy Dalton versus Brandon Allen. So, mm. yeah, Brandon Allen completing 50% of his passes in his career. Hashtag not good. Gio Bernard, another week, another Gio start. I mean, it's so hard because they gave up – Dallas gave up 294 rushing yards last week. I'm still – not excited about Gio Bernard. Gio is in play here for me. Um, I, I was looking at him this week, and I think he is a flex option just based on the matchup. The Cowboys have been so bad at stopping the run, and the, the Bengals are going to try to run as much as they can. If they get down and they need to throw, they can always throw the ball to Gio. So uh, Giovanni Bernard, while he has just been absolutely dreadful the last eight few weeks. 8 for 30, weeks, 9 for 18, 8 for 32, 12 for 30. That's what he I'm talking about. He can't pass 32 yards rushing. Just, yeah, he's but been terrible. Pittsburgh, Washington, the Giants and Miami. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I get those, it. those are strong defenses. And the couple weeks before the bye week, Tennessee, Cleveland, he had good performances uh, against those teams. So I'm, I'm with Jason. I'm not, I'm not overly excited about Giovanni Bernard because of it's Giovanni Bernard. But matchup and volume dictates that you could flex him this week. Uh, Amari Cooper, yes. CD Lamb, Michael Gallup. Are you playing all def- th- three of those players? I, I don't think I'm. I'm for sure playing all three of those players. Amari Cooper, I am for sure playing. We'll talk about him later. He's been very good uh, with Andy Dalton. CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup are shots you can take. Michael Gallup obviously had a good game this last week, and CeeDee Lamb is unbelievably talented, but they are uh, they're the secondary options here in a game that you don't expect to be some crazy barn burner. 42.5 point over under in Vegas says... Eh, this is just kind of going to be a crap fest of a game. Yeah. It, Tyler Boyd's production last week was one short route that turned magical, and then there was nothing else, got ejected, didn't get a bunch of targets. Higgins is my favorite receiver to play because I know Higgins is going to catch five passes, and he's big enough and strong enough and relevant enough in the in the red zone to where I think, like, I would probably go in this matchup, I'd go Cooper 1-1. And then I'd be willing to probably play Higgins and then go to all the other Dallas wide receivers. Higgins over CD? I think so. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. The, I was I was trying to look up the volume, though, know, for CD Lamb. He he saw nine targets against the Baltimore Ravens, but the game script dictated that. Like, the Ravens were beating the crap out of uh, <laughs> Dallas. So I, I, this, this feels like a game that's more Zeke. As long as he's healthy, he's going to see a lot of work, and it's going to be uh, – Lower scoring. I'm with you, Jason, that the, the 42 and a half point over under is, is not exciting. Uh, Denzel Mims is out. Is that just come through, uh, Al? Yes, sir. So, okay, he's out. Brashad, well, I mean, we haven't got to that matchup yet, but Brashad Perryman is interesting. Wasn't he? Uh, Mims was potentially in one of your lineups this he week. He was, yep, yeah, because they're playing the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, so. Personally, I even even in a decent matchup, I don't really want to go with Boyd or Higgins. I I do view them very similar as Lamb or Gallup players that you can throw in a lineup. But in the playoffs, uh, it, it, you know, if I had to if I had to put one in the playoffs for m- my taste, I would rather have CD Lamb because I think he's got the biggest game breaking potential. But that's similar to the argument for Higgins. Higgins over Boyd, the, the game breaking individual player talent that could do it on any play yeah yeah you know those like flow charts that you have on a piece of paper that it starts with a question at the top and it's like do you want to play somebody in this game Mm -hmm. yes or no like if that says do you have to play somebody in this game and then you've already selected yes then these questions get filtered out other than zeke to me but i'm trying to choose i'm trying to choose no sure Uh, um the only other player that i would bring up is dalton schultz i have somehow been backed into being a Dalton Schultz hater, which I, I'm not for real. It was more for the bit of the show, but this matchup, uh, the Bengals have been really, 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 really bad against tight end, and if you are scrambling and you have absolutely nobody that 
you like, and every week you're somehow winning with a zero at your tight end, because I know there's a lot of you out there, you can look Schultz's direction. I agree. Why are you shaking your head, Andy? Because I think I'm getting schultz Yes, I picked him up to play him. I am Which, play, like, right now. To be clear, getting Schultz is not like a ba- <laughs> it's not that bad of a thing. No. Yeah, Mike's getting Kelsey. <laughs> but that is true. I, I, for context for people out there, I have Austin Hooper. I've just I've been enduring all of that nonsense and, and Austin The Hooper Poopers. Yes, and, and yeah. Hooper could still come through this week, but as of now, I am playing Dalton Schultz over Austin Hooper. Yeah, right, Jason. I don't care who he plays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care one bit who he plays. <laughs> Play them all. <laughs> all right, Kansas City, Miami, Chiefs seven point favorites. I feel like that line's come down. I'm pretty sure when I put picks in earlier this week, that was seven and a half. Ooh. Seven, seven feels better uh, picking the Kansas City side. Forty nine and a half point over under though, and uh, I don't know. This should be a very interesting matchup for Kansas City. You. From a fantasy perspective, it doesn't really matter that they're playing Miami. You don't sit Patrick Mahomes or Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. But Miami's not a great matchup, and especially on the ground, the last six weeks, they're fourth against opposing running backs. My confidence in Clyde edwards alaire is that it, That's everything. That, it's at a basement level already, so this matchup doesn't make me excited. That is, Everything about the Kansas City side just comes down to can you trust Clyde edwards alaire in your – fantasy playoffs after the the drama of last week where he he was sick he was missing practice because he was sick not COVID related and uh, but then you got the alert oh Clyde Edwards Alaire is going to be activated it, he's he looks like he's gonna play well he was activated but he did not take a single snap and yeah Brooks matched him in snap camp. yes Yes. Uh, that's right. Congratulations, Brooks, on getting on the field uh, th- that often. But Brooks Edwards Alaire. Um, yeah, I mean it, it really is. So I I throw that game out with the illness and the snap counts. I mean uh, he wasn't relegated for performance or or any of those reasons. But at the same time, you've got some fear in the production that he has had. So the way that I look at him, I'm I'm looking at other players, players I would play him ahead of players I would play ahead of him, and I would play Clyde Edwards-Alaire ahead of Kareem Hunt and Miles Sanders, who I believe have really difficult matchups and their situations you have been great. You would play Clyde Edwards-Alaire above both those players? I personally wow. would, mm. and I would play uh, Kenyon Drake and Wayne Gallman ahead of Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Who are the first two names that you said? Miles Sanders and did you say Kareem Hunt? Yes. Wow. Okay, I will... Uh, I will give you the kind of Jason bet that you love, which is odds. Oh, I love good odds. So I think Edwards Alaire finishes lower than both of those players. The matchup's terrible. His opportunities have gone down. I disagree with you, so you vehemently. So you win if both outscore. I need both. All right. That's let's your go. kind of bet. I, I, I like it. Water bet. You'll take all heavy odds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm I Mike, you questioned, it seemed, uh, Jason's take there. This is a tough, tough matchup. They only give up 14.9 fantasy points per game on the ground in to all you know opposing running backs, uh, and this is a room with three players that are going to get work, Clyde, Lev, and Daryl. Yeah, it, it just it, – the, the conf, I don't know where I am on my confidence level with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I, I'm pl- Why don't you I, ask yourself? I, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to work it out in front of everybody here. I mean, right now I have him ranked as a, as a low-end running back too. Last week, that's I mean that's a really bad taste in people's mouth to be waiting all week. He gets activated. You think, okay, I'm safe. I'm putting Clyde Ed, uh, Clyde in, and he gives you a zero. And yeah, it's, certainly the opportunities have, have have dropped a bit here since they, the the acquisition of Le'Veon Bell. But also, you know, two of the last four games, and I'm counting the the zero game. Two of the last four games, he's been a top twenty guy, including a running back two finish just two weeks ago against the Las Vegas Raiders. So it's, it's not an impossibility that Clyde Edwards-Alaire comes in and even on 12 touches ends up getting two rushing touchdowns. Like that, That's in the range of outcomes. But last week makes it really, really difficult to fully endorse Clyde. All right, where are you with the Devontae Parker experience uh, now that Tua is back behind center? Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, we miss you. Yeah. For how easy you made our lives. 
projecting the Miami side of the football. I mean, against the Cincinnati Bengals and eight targets for Devontae Parker last week, four for 35. To a, you it, have destroyed our beautiful Devontae Parker. I, it, it's so weird. I don't remember, uh, in, in recent memory at least, another example where a clear-cut, 100% better option for your offense is available and the whole world knows it right and we're just we're choosing no like what what is happening i get it you're playing for the future you got to know what you got into uh, and all that jazz but it's just it's just a very unique situation because i think we would all smash play parker every single game that fitzpatrick is is Correct. active that's not now Tua is active and i do not want to play Devonte parker i would rather play uh brashad perriman uh, or or even Jamison Crowder over Devontae Parker. It's I can think of a, a semi-close example that's happening right now, and that's the Taysom Hill versus Jameis Winston situation where the way New Orleans wins is to try to – I mean, I, clearly Winston is more turnover prone, um, which is the situation for Fitzpatrick, and they're trying to win a different way. You have elements of the, you know, the rookie getting experience, so – yeah, it's tough. It's tough to have confidence in Parker, and we have him outside the top twenty-four because of uh, because of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mike Gesicki, another big game last week, nine for eighty-eight and a touchdown, eleven targets. I like Mike Gesicki right now. Sure, yeah, that, that's a fair thing. And then, oh, if you have to shoot your shot on somebody outside of Tyree Kill at the wide receiver core, mm -hmm. where's your confidence level with Hardman, Watkins, Robinson? They've all been kind of involved. Mm, you 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 got me with the wide receiver core. I was so excited to say Kelsey. Um, it's 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 <laughs> he, taking he, it up to one hundred. Is he a play for you this week? Uh, yeah, Travis I'm going I'm I'm to put him in. Um, I mean it's it's irrelevant. Uh, I I don't think I would start any of those guys. So let me ask you that. Demarcus Robinson would be my answer, uh, begrudgingly. I mean Mike grimaces because yeah. But if I said Sammy Watkins, you'd grimace. If I said McCall Hardman, you'd grimace. Would you rather take a shot with one of those guys, the ancillary piece for Patrick Mahomes, or a T. Higgins, C. D. Lamb type in a low-scoring game as the possible wide receiver two on their own team? Because I feel more prone. It is so weird. They're all wide receiver twos here. I feel more prone to move away from Patrick Mahomes' guy. I'd I play agree. T. Higgins over those three players because you don't I... know who it's going to be, and Miami's a pretty good defense. And it, yes, it's the wide receiver two, but it's not the number two option. Yep. Right. Yeah. And uh, on the Dolphins side, just real quick, like you weren't going to play him, but Miles Gaskin, the gas man, after stopping over at uh, Exxon Mobil, got, up. got fueled up, running back 17 with 23 opportunities. I know the, it was the Bengals, and the, the matchup this week is much more difficult against Kansas City. But It's all about the opportunities. But it's the opportunities, man. You, the, his last four active games, 20-plus opportunities in each of them. This is fantastic for for fantasy football. Actually, I I uh I don't know that the matchup is any worse over the last four uh, over the last five weeks. If you look at the uh, uh my my uh fantasy points above opponents average metric, mm -hmm. Kansas City's been terrible at running back at stopping the running back. So this is I, I think this is a great matchup for for Gaskin. And surprisingly, the Bengals aren't a bad run D. You think they are because they're a bad overall team. But they, on the course of the season, have just been, you know, kind of middle middle of the pack. All right. Well, then the gas man's in. Yeah. Light him up. Uh, before Don't do that. Don't <laughs> light up the gas man. What? I want him on fire. This but, is... he'll... but he will explode. For fantasy points. I want that. <laughs> yeah, I want I'm, the explosion. I am struggling with where to go with the metaphor, and I think Jason's right on this one. Yeah. I mean. I look, think the gas man. Look. All I if, can see if is. If all you have is gas, what, <laughs> right, what are you what, doing? What are you going to You got to light it? that on fire. All gotta... I can see is Zoolander. All I can see is NBA Jam. <laughs> I want my guy on fire, dunking on people, but, boom shakalaka. But if those people were covered in gasoline, then it would be a really boom big shakalaka. problem. <laughs> All right, before we get to the next matchup, want to thank big score. today's sponsor, uh, Zendesk. Look, this is the holiday season. We're all dealing with shopping and purchasing and customer service issues and returns and, oh, there's a problem with this thing. And, and we've all had horrific, awful customer service mm. out there. Even when... Customer service is good, but you know sometimes you struggle to have your customers feel taken care of. 
That's what Zendesk's award-winning support sales customer engagement software helps businesses offer. Uh, they give businesses everything they need to stay connected with the customers, communicate seamlessly across all your channels, emails, phones, chats, messengers, forums, help center, social media. Zendesk calls it a conversational experience, and it's all made possible with Zendesk's complete customer profile and unified set of tools that give you the context you need to deliver great service in every conversation. Most software requires expensive consultants and months of setup, but with Zendesk, it takes hours to get up and running. And with over 150,000 paid customer accounts and over a decade of experience, they've got pretty good, they've gotten pretty, pretty good at customer pretty, service themselves. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. good. <laughs> so see why you're, uh, see for yourself why the best customer service experiences are built with Zendesk. To get started, go to Zendesk.com slash footballers. That's Z-E-N-Desk.com slash footballers. All right. The Arizona Cardinals at 6-6 six and six take on the 5-7 and seven New York Giants. Cardinals are one-and-a-half point favorites. It's a 44-and-a-half point over-under. And the Giants are on a roll. I mean, Joe Judge started 1-7. They've won four consecutive games. Arizona's lost three straight. If Arizona loses this ball game, which is certainly a possibility, they are – Barely favorites. Going to be a tough week for me. <laughs> it's going to be a real <laughs> tough week. Uh, the Giants defense, though, it's legitimate. I mean, they had a, a super impressive performance last week. Nobody saw it coming. Shutting down Seattle. Um, they've allowed the second fewest 20-plus yard completions. To me, that's not an issue for Kyler. He he likes it between two and four yards down the field lately. Um, but But they've been great. Yeah, they have, and I could easily see the Cardinals losing this game. They have a very bad track record of traveling to the East Coast, um, you know, and and especially if if it's not a later game, this is going to be difficult for the the Cardinals. And Andy, you will maybe feel bad, but cheer up, Buttercup, because our <laughs> thousandth episode was great. And a little toot toot here, Andy. Right now, you are number three on the season in accuracy rankings, not just top 25 or top 20 or top 10 or top five. You're number three. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. So I will give you the toot toot. Uh, well, thank you. It does. That did cheer me up. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Uh, and the game hasn't been played yet and they haven't lost yet. So that also gives me a sense of potential. Yeah, that they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, independent of my own home homer bias towards the Cardinals, I, I'm actually, I think it's pretty cool that the Giants and, and, Washington are both competing for this division and trying to like win games to win the division and things of that nature. Kyler, we've talked a lot about the situation right now. I talked about the the route tree for DeAndre Hopkins, which has become a route bush because it's just pathetic. I mean, you have a player that is it's a finely manicured bush. Yeah, uh, Nuke has as many twenty plus yard targets as Hayden Hurst. Guys, that's all you need to say. That's an embarrassment. That's an embarrassment to the talent of DeAndre Hopkins. That's disgusting. It's if an I embarrassment was, to the offensive mastermind of Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. I mean, mastermind. if I was Hopkins, I would print out those next-gen stats of the routes I've been running. <laughs> I'd print it up on a giant poster board. I'd hang it up in the locker room, and I'd write WTH at the top of it. Like, this is not acceptable. That being said, you play him um, because – He's the go-to target monster of the team. Out. What about Kenyon Drake, though? Because this is a tough situation. Drake has been hit and miss. He but seems, he's been hitting. He has been hitting, and and Kyler's inefficiency on the ground and his unwillingness to run the football has lent to goal line opportunities. Yeah, and, and I expect them to be here again uh, this week. I, Kenyon Drake, to me, is a good play this week. The, if you look at the New York Giants defense, look at who their opponents are, both on the season and over the last five and six weeks, they have really, really been good uh, against the passing game, but they are actually bad against the run game. So this projects to be a game where uh, Kenyon Drake should be involved. We know his utilization is there. He's been good for fantasy, and the matchup is there. So I, I think they're going to need to lean on Kenyon Drake, which is, you know, it has not been a successful endeavor for the Cardinals so far this season. But the matchup says I th Drake should be in your lineup. Let, we, we've let, seen a little bit of a difference, though, in the usage of Kenyon Drake. The last three weeks, uh, five more targets, five targets, four targets, three. Now that's not uh, usually how I trend things, unless I'm counting off a rocket ship, a rocket ship <laughs> to fly into the air. But considering that. 
he had never seen more than two targets up until week 11. It's at least a positive sign. I think it's a great sign, and he's been a top 18 running back three straight weeks, a couple of top 12 performances. I think we need to move on from the narrative street that, look, he had a bad start to the year, but he's been pretty good for a while now. And if you listen to the local uh, you know, reports around the team, they need to run the football more, not less. They need to take pressure off of Kyler. They need to establish a little bit different of a game plan than what they've been putting out there. So I'm with you, Jason. Now for the offense of the Giants. Yeah. Uh, the, the wide receivers are obviously hampered and hurt by the fact that there is a backup quarterback in Colt McCoy. This is a uh, pretty good matchup, though. Well, and Daniel Jones is supposed to play in this game. Oh, Daniel Jones. Yeah, I, yeah, he's going to be back. So well, Daniel right. Daniel Jones is going to start. It doesn't give me a great deal of confidence choosing between these players, though. Um, I'm not sure. You know, if you, it feels like Cincinnati, where if you get the right one, you have a mediocre game, and I don't like that situation for my fantasy team. Shepard's been mediocre. Slayton, if you miss the big play, not good. Golden Tate's there. I don't have a great deal of confidence there. I think Shepard is the play that you, the safest play. Shepard is the guy that I would start. I, I think he's just the most overall talented because they utilize him downfield and in short stuff from time to he time. Just, he's just been so yeah, bad. But yeah, I mean, not there hasn't really been any wide receiver, including I mean, Ebron has only been good because he's in he's being compared to other tight ends. Ingram? Any place, Ingram. any place for the Steelers, which makes him better. <laughs> what I say, Ebron. You said Ebron. Oh yeah. yeah, Evan Ingram is what I said. In my mind, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he he would be the more, the better shot to take. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we need to discuss the wide receivers from the Giants. I agree, but you know who has been good? Wayne Gallman. Oh, he's been great. <laughs> it's been unbelievable. He's, he's the RB six since week seven. Yeah, this it's bananas. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Really? What? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you guys were unaware, huh? I. That's why I reacted we're, We this were way. unaware yeah. of your starts because you didn't have them in before the show started, right? No, I had them in before oh, okay. the show started. Just I'm making yesterday. them up as I go along. No, I know. You were working on them this morning, but I did not take. I did not sneak a peek, but now I know. There you go. Interesting. Spoiler. Dan Arnold, we had a question on the show yesterday about whether you could, you could start the postman or on the footcast we had that question. He's had a couple good weeks in a row. That's what you get when you mess with the postman. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with the postman in the playoffs. <laughs> He's apparently done well enough. That we gave him his drop back. And it, by a couple weeks in a row, Andy, you mean a couple week. Yes. Oh, a really? A couple week in a row. <laughs> yeah. he, it, it was great. Was it, it was, two weeks ago? I thought he had a touchdown recently. No, he had two touchdowns, but they were both the same game. Uh, no, he scored He scored uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, and we, somehow he scored in week 11 and, and managed still ended up to be the, the tight end 17. Yeah, that, that's the problem. It was one <laughs> catch for four yards. How do you score a touchdown as a tight end and you don't finish in the top 12? I don't know. Mike Evans was giving him lessons from early in the it's season. Ridiculous. All right, Minnesota Vikings 6-6. Six and six. They're on fire right now, taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers are 7-5. and five. Oh, my gosh, do I do this one? Oh, Buccaneers are favored by six and a half. No, they're favored by six. Yeah. Coming off the bye. Andy's almost upset of the week. Man. You know how much time Tom Brady's had to have, like, shakes and plants? That's a lot. Of, that's a lot, of, a lot of protein shakes. A lot of juicing, but, like, Why literally. <laughs> All right, uh, the Buccaneers are six and a half point favorites. It's a fifty-one and a half point over under. I just don't know when I can rely on Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. I'm not exactly sure when. I do know that the Vikings are well coached and they've made huge strides. They're now in the playoffs. Do you guys realize that? Yes, because they they're a have, playoff team. They have the tiebreaker against Arizona based on the winning percentage that of common opponents. So is insane. Let's go, Buccaneers! And they've played; uh, they just improved tremendously. Um, I mean, uh, we 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 all know the stat, uh, not verbatim, but you you get hit over the head of it. Uh, a team that starts zero and two, their chance of making the playoffs just almost evaporate. The Minnesota Vikings started one and five. Yeah, they've won. What a turnaround! They've man. won five of six weeks, and it's what a shame too, because their one loss was a nail biter to the Cowboys. And if that one comes back to bite them, that will hurt. Um, but they, they've been good, and you look, their defense is a is a problem. Their defense is not 
outstanding. They struggled tremendously against the pass to start the year. But over the last six weeks, they've been a lot better. They've made scheme improvements, uh, their offense. At the end of the day, you have a very good quarterback in Kirk Cousins. You have Dalvin Cook, who is one of the best running backs in the league, and you have two of the best wide receivers in football, Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. That's true. I mean, they're, they're so good. They, they, I mean, are are there 10 wide receivers that are better than them in the league and they're both on the same team? Those guys are unbelievable. No, they are. And Adam Thielen right now is, is just barely behind Devontae Adams in terms of the highest graded wide receivers against single coverage. Those two players are more open than any other combination in football. And this is a very, very vulnerable Buccaneers defense in the passing game. 31st over the last six weeks against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. 32nd against wide receivers. I'm going to talk about Kirk Cousins in a little bit. All right. Well, let's talk about Dalvin Cook real quick. Uh, we had So last week against Jacksonville, Alexander Madison was out with an illness. He it, it, or uh, he had the, the appendix out of him. Am I right? You are right. Yeah, so I can't expect that Alexander Madison is going to play this week. And it was funny because on Slack, you know, it's like, oh, man, you know, Alexander Madison's out. We're going to see an uptick in work from Dalvin Cook. And Jason's like, you guys are really excited about these three attempts that Madison's been taking? That was his exact voice. Mike, that was yes. awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, over Slack. That turned into uh, 22 opportunities against Carolina in week 12 for Dalvin Cook to 41 it, opportunities. It was actually 38. It was actually 38 opportunities. Was it? It was. Our what? math, I know what you're looking at, and that's wrong. But 41 it's, opportunities, not touches. Oh, what is an opportunity? A target? Yes. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because he had nine targets, he caught six. I of them. apologize. Yes. So yeah. the opportunities. 38 touches? <laughs> that, that number is also insane. Oh. Goodness gracious, Dalvin. His quote was, I feel great. I need 38 more. I don't know that he does. <laughs> I don't know that his body will handle that. Yeah, isn't that the greatest like conundrum for the fantasy manager of Dalvin Cook? Because I've got him in a league. You've got him in a league. <laughs> I want all I can get. Yeah. But you feel like the um it's like the risk rating rises through the game. Oh, definitely. And you're yes. like, oh, just give him one more. Like yeah. like you're uh, about to bust. Yes. That's such yeah. a hit. Right? Hit. Hit, like, hit uh, one more. Hit sir, one more. Sir, you have eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Hit me. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. But yeah, I mean this is a, a bad matchup and it's irrelevant. And we talked about this when we were looking at the playoffs. Uh, in our playoff primer episode a couple weeks ago, the terrible matchups coming for uh, Dalvin Cook, mm -hmm. it does not matter. It's irrelevant. He's the, the level of player that it, there is no decision to be made. All right, but Ronald Jones on the other side, uh, Minnesota's allowing the highest rush success rate in the NFL, but they don't give up a lot of rushing touchdowns so far this year. Ronald Jones, though, the comments that it can never be trusted out of Bruce Arians is that he needs 20 opportunities a game. And he's seen 11 the last two. Yeah. Well, they, they came after that game. Oh. Uh, oh heading I into apologize. the bye week, right, Mike? They put the Ronald <laughs> Jones plan into place during the bye. Uh-oh. That's trouble. But Brady, look, the matchup's good for Brady. We're playing, yeah, yeah, we're know, playing I'm, Brady. I'm playing, I'm playing Ronald Tom Brady. Jones. Even the, we, we talked about it. The Vikings have been a lot better over the last six weeks. Uh, seventh, actually, against fantasy quarterbacks. But I will play Tom Brady. Are you? What is your confidence level in starting Ronald Jones, though? It's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will say this, though. I have adjusted the the kind of trifecta view of the wide receiving core where it seems like, you know, you might as well just start all three because you don't know who's going to be at the top. I've moved to the point now with Antonio Brown where I am moving him down a peg compared to the other two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's just not – he's not had the breakout game through four four different weeks with the team. He's not broken the top 24 at wide receiver. And when you have Gronkowski downfield, Evans downfield, Godwin healthy, I just don't know if you it's worth the risk. It was it was really weird uh, going up against Kansas City before the bye with Antonio Brown's utilization because what you had seen leading up to that was more and more and more involvement. He went from you know five targets to eight targets to thirteen targets, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. in this high over under game with Pat Mahomes, three targets. Um, so I, I understand your hesitation. I, I do think that he could be played. I, I think all three are worthy options, and I would start Higgins or H Antonio Brown. I would start Antonio Brown over Higgins. I, I would take any one of these three over uh, the Bengals trifecta of trying to get 
some play with that quarterback. 51 and a half point over under. Kind of excited about this game. I think that's going to be a really fun one. The Broncos at four and eight take on the Carolina Panthers at four and eight. Panthers three and a half point favorites. It's a 46 and a half point over under. Okay. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about this one. I think there's, I think there's some, some secret juice hidden in this matchup. All right. Uh, number one, I like the Carolina Panthers defense against <laughs> Drew Locke. <laughs> And his irresponsible ways on the football field. Isn't that field. the best way to put Let's just keep that narrative going. Drew Locke is irresponsible. Oh, he's super irresponsible. <laughs> he is irresponsible with the football. Who he didn't flush the toilet? It was Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Drew, Drew Locke didn't flush. Drew Locke has never once put the milk back in the fridge. Not one time in his or life. The, nor the lid. Oh, the lid is over and on the other And he left the door open. <laughs> You're darn right. I mean, it's... Thank it's, goodness it beeps. If it didn't beep, it would all be bad. Yeah. He's irresponsible. And and you know what? Tough to trust people that are irresponsible That's with right. your fantasy playoffs. Tough to trust the pass catching options. Although I can love Tim Patrick, but you know what? An irresponsible quarterback does he can forget about. He can forget about something like Tim Patrick. So if I'm starting one, I'm starting Tim Patrick. Yeah, Tim yeah. Patrick has been top. So 20. I think he's okay. He's been a top twenty wide receiver two of the last three weeks. Yeah, in his last five games, he's been a top thirty six wide receiver each and every single one of those, with the sole exception of the game where they didn't have a quarterback. Uh, so, right, you know that that one is truly deleted. And uh, I think no Tim fan. Patrick. Is, oh, sorry. I, I think Tim Patrick is in play. I would. So here, uh, Tim Patrick or or Antonio Brown. Ooh. I would rather go Tim Patrick. I would, I would play, play Tim, Tim Patrick. I'd play Tim Patrick. So yeah. that that puts him ahead of the Bengals, ahead of Antonio Brown. He's 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 just been a solid wide receiver option. Yeah, and then Noah Fant. I f I felt like the involvement last week was good. Uh, he's somebody that you can play. Carolina in particular has been really bad against opposing fantasy tight ends. Fourteen point seven points per game, 29th in the league. Fant, I feel like is fine. Like I'd play, I'd rather play Fant than than Dalton Schultz. I'd rather play Fant. Yeah, than that's that's fine. Austin right. Hooper. Dalton Schultz is Dalton Schultz has a zero percent chance to rip off an eighty yard touchdown. Would, would you play zero <laughs> percent? Because he's never run eighty total yards before. Yeah. Would you play uh, Noah Fant or Eric Ebron, who's had back to back eleven targets? Are you weeks? asking for a friend? Maybe. <laughs> I would play Eric Ebron based on the involvement, red zone opportunities. Okay. I love what I've seen from the Ebron targets. Although he oh, is in the catches, he is in the he's in the doghouse with Deontay. We haven't brought that up with Deontay Johnson, where Mike Tomlin just basically came out and in Mike Tomlin way and said, in a very scary. way, I was a little scared. I was like, I'm not going to drop a pass, Mike. He just said, Yeah, if you don't catch the ball, I'm just going to replace you with somebody that can't. I expect routine plays to be made routinely. Yeah, were his words. Uh, oh, it, man. I mean, bruh, Mike Tomlin. I love Mike Tomlin. He might be my favorite coach in the NFL outside of like Andy Reid because of. Yay fun. Yeah. Uh, Tomlin is just, he's hes like the dad. He's like the responsible say. father that just has all of his children, all of his children's respect, all of them. And, you know, you don't want to cross him. He's hes a, you know, he loves that you. That heart to heart with Mike Tomlin after you, you know, you oh. crashed the car or something. Ooh. You snuck in late. You came back after curfew. And you don't want to disappoint him because you actually respect him. <laughs> I agree. I only make the mistake once when Mike Tomlin. Comes you know and who talks needs to Mike Tomlin? Drew Locke. Drew Locke. <laughs> <laughs> you need the irresponsible kid to get a better father. Oh no! <laughs> oh my gosh! You're right. He does. You think Denver can like solicit just a conversation? Like Drew Locke walks into the room and in comes Mike Tomlin. <laughs> Although I will say this: if Drew Locke has a first cousin, it's probably Mason Rudolph, and Tomlin yeah, hasn't yeah. really hasn't really lifted him up. All right, Teddy Bridgewater. Against the Denver Broncos defense, not somebody that I'm looking at this week. Especially if you got, you know, DJ Moore is a big play, explosive, uh, supplemental plan for for the Teddy Bridgewater fantasy numbers. We'll be figuring out whether Christian McCaffrey's out there. If he's not, Mike Davis is a must start. If McCaffrey's out there, you always start him. Yeah, I mean, uh, Denver is a really good matchup right now for running backs. Um, so I'm really excited for Christian McCaffrey. Please play. Please play. Titans eight and four. Jacksonville one and eleven. Titans are seven point favorites. It's a fifty three point over under. I like the Titans to cover in this one. Um, <laughs> I like our editor in chief Kyle. Uh, he he spared no words here. Derrick Henry versus Jacksonville is a bloodbath. That's what he wrote. But do we disagree? I I don't think we disagree. No, we don't disagree. I've, I'm going up against Derrick Yeti. 
uh, in this week, and and it doesn't even matter the rest of the team. It's just please rest him, Tennessee. Not gonna happen. I uh, know. So basically, this is start all your Titans: Tannehill, Henry, yes. Brown, and Davis. the The paths have cleared, so to speak, for for the. Anthony Ferksers and Corey Davises of the world where Johnny Smith was out last week. Adam Humphreys is going to be out for the rest of the year. So Corey Davis confidence is at an all time high, right? Yes. All time high. And, and and I think you start everybody. This isn't one of those games and one of those matchups where Derrick Henry means Tannehill will be irrelevant. I, I think that Derrick Henry will have a good game and Tannehill will have a good game. Um, I, I yeah, th this, this week I'm starting every single Titan that is relevant. Uh, I, I don't think I dip down to Ferkser. I mean, if I would put Schultz ahead of Ferkster, Ferkser, <laughs> and um, Schultz isn't that high. On the other side, though, we I know we talked about DJ Chark, and you're taking it up to 100. Um, James Robinson's the only must-start from this team, though. Yes. Uh, DJ Chark has finished um, inside mm. the top 45 one time in seven weeks. Mm. So... You, if you want to ride, ride or die with Jason, that's fine. He's the most talented of a bunch of players that don't get consistent production due to uh, limiting factors, namely changing, rotating quarterbacks. So to put him on the scale of players we've talked about today, I would still start Tim Patrick over him for for security, for targets, for you know those. But I would personally take DJ Chark over the Antonio Browns and Higgins. I'm still going to bet on the talent and the is a huge plus matchup. Tennessee's secondary is as slow as it gets in the league, and DJ Chark is as fast as it gets in the league. Colts at eight and four, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders at seven and five. Colts are three point favorites. It's a fifty one and a half point over under. I'm a little shocked at the line. I would have thought it would be more. Colts six and a half, something yeah. like that. The Raiders are the they're seven and five, and they inspire the confidence of a four and. 10 team. Now we've been saying it for a couple of weeks. It's been true for a couple of weeks, but the Raiders have played to their competition. Uh, they've played well against, you know, these uh, divisional matchups against the, the Kansas City Chiefs, and they've played terribly against the Jets and, you know, poor teams. The Colts are a good team, so I think they'll get up for this game. And I, I know we brought up Clyde earlier. I was going to bring up Jonathan Taylor at that time. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't know that Mike, you had yes, you had the confidence that you did with Taylor this week, but I do as well. I think Jonathan Taylor is set up for a absolute smash week against the Raiders. Raiders are not a good defense. Twenty ninth on the year against running backs, twenty first over the last six weeks. Jonathan Taylor is set up for success, and the snap counts last week got near the fifty percent mark, which should be enough against the Raiders. Yeah, and that's you want Jonathan Taylor to have sixty five percent of the snaps, but. 50% in this matchup is is all it needs. I, I, I think uh, all Jonathan, we need. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to get a lot of people to the second round of the playoffs. I agree with you. And one of the funny things is last week I tweeted, nobody has been better in football with yards after the catch than Jonathan Taylor. They just don't throw him the ball very much. And then last week he housed one of those fourth down receptions. It's it's like Derrick Henry. I, like Derrick Henry doesn't get very many receptions, but – once, once he is moving. I mean, that's that's the thing. Those big guys are hard to tackle. If you can get them a head start running, nobody wants to tackle them. Do that. Just yeah. get them in space. Yeah, you, you make a business decision. But uh, Phillip Rivers, I think, is sneaky in this one. Yes. And he has T.Y. Hilton and Michael Pittman to throw the ball to. Naeem Hines, Jonathan Taylor, and uh, the, the great three tight ends that are Trey Burton, Jack Doyle, Mo Alley Cox. So this is a pretty great matchup across the board for the Colts. And and I know you won't play Phillip Rivers, Jason. I know no, that this is no. a personal decision that you've made. I, I would start Hines. I would start Jonathan Taylor. I would start T.Y. Hilton. I would start Michael Pittman. And start all the pass I, I, And I would options. rather be dead than start Phillip Rivers. I, I imagine at this point you might have – it might even be a legal decision for you because I'm guessing you filed some paperwork after what happened to you last playoffs – Still waiting to hear back, but I'm sure I'll I'll get. I'll, I can't believe they haven't prioritized your I'll hear back from his lawyers. Your paperwork soon. But what about the Raiders side against this Colts defense? Colts have been uh, a great defense all year long. Josh Jacobs is probably not going to play, and if that's the case, where I mean, Darren Waller is always in your lineup, but outside of that. No, I mean that that's the only that's the only playable asset. Uh you know, we we talked about Devontae Booker last that's, week. I think you can play Booker. You think you can play Booker ag against the Colts? I do. I mean 18 uh, it's just like Giovanni Bernard. Like 
18 De- Booker That's the meanest thing you've ever said to Devontae Booker. I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Booker. Uh it, but it, last week it didn't turn into fantasy points. I I totally understand Peyton that. Barber, Devontae Booker, Gio Bernard put him in order. Uh I would go Giovanni Bernard, Devontae Booker. I'm not playing uh, Peyton Barber. Th- that's the exact order I would put it in, but my I'm not playing would come before Devontae Booker. 18 opportunities, man. No, I know, but the the Indianapolis defense is so good and, and you know I, I realized that over the last five or six weeks they've been bad against the running back but I, th- I think that's really really is inflated. Devontae Booker still running back I think it's really inflated by the Derrick Henry game where they didn't uh, have I play, their I de- play Booker over Geo. they did have their been defensive a disaster. line you've actually seen Booker like look like a player with Josh Jacobs this year so I'd go Booker Geo, Barber probably no what am I kidding I- I'm gonna go Barber over Geo. I'm biting Gio this week. That's oh, so all ridiculous. Right. I mean, look, you Just got, based wh- on all of his games. But that's it. Otherwise, that's only you said it's so ridiculous. But it's yeah. all of Gio's games that keep me out on him. Okay. Okay. You that's- guys are you guys are more supportive of the Brandon Allens and the Mike Glenns of the world. I when I I know what these the the basement can be for these offenses with the third string quarterbacks. And it is a world that destroys your playoffs. I don't want to be a part of that. All right, top uh, top thirty running back. <laughs> <laughs> We're no. trying to find—is this a Giovanni bet? I yeah, think it was a Giovanni, Giovanni bet. bet. Well, think about it, Jason. We okay. still got another day, so if we want to make a Geo bet tomorrow because we want to talk about him more, we have that opportunity. I mean, you just said you'd play Peyton Barber over him. Peyton, Peyton Barber. Had, He's like probably your running back fifty. Peyton Barber has a higher touchdown chance, and he had fifteen carries last week. Peyton Barber will have fifteen carries this week. Won't matter because of the matchup. Yeah, it will matter. <laughs> All right, let's move uh, on. Starts of the week. I'll take your top 30 bet if you make Gio your start of the week at running back. Ooh, uh, no? Nope. All right, starts of the week, playoffs, week one. I'm going back to the well twice in my starts this week, and I'm going with Kirk Cousins. We talked about the matchup on today's show. He's on fire. He, this is bold. But he is on he is. fire. Tampa Bay has been bad. And Kirk Cousins, guess what? He's throwing the football a lot. 40-plus pass attempts the last two weeks. We talk about what... Look, if Mike Zimmer had a choice, maybe Kirk Cousins throws the ball six times. He doesn't have a choice with the way this defense performs. He's not going to have a choice this week with Tampa Bay going up against the Minnesota defense. Uh, they've won five of six games with him throwing to those two beautiful superstar wide receivers. Tampa Bay, what what do they hang their hat on as a defense? They stop the run. It's what they do. Kirk's going to have to throw to keep up with TB12, and he's got four straight top 12 weeks. I'm going back with Kirk Cousins here. Okay, Go ahead, I'm, uh, I'm going back to a guy who was oh, you're, on fire. You're, you're heading to Foot Locker. I, yeah, I'm heading to Foot Locker. We need a new pair of shoes. The shoes <laughs> fell. They came off. Over the last two weeks, it took Justin, me a Herbert, <laughs> Justin Herbert uh, has had two poor weeks in a row. The the Buffalo Bills a couple of weeks ago, this this pa- this previous week against the New England Patriots, Bill Belichick scheming the rookie out. Uh, they got blown out 45 to nothing. He schemed out the entire Chargers team. Yeah, yeah, he really did. Um, it's a great coach versus a bad coach. That's, that's what you're going to get sometimes. Um, but Justin Herbert had seven straight quarterback one performances. And I believe that this matchup is obviously fantastic. Atlanta has been the worst against quarterbacks and wide receivers in the league. Now, recently, they've certainly gotten better. Um, So you might be hesitant. You might be saying, well, this Atlanta defense is getting better. Justin Herbert is coming uh, back down to earth. But look, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Hunter Henry. I'm I'm betting on the weapons against an Atlanta offense that can keep up. You've got two bad defenses, two good offenses. I think you want Herbert in your lineup this week. Yeah, I agree. I'm back in with Herbert, and I'm going with Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill from the Tennessee Titans. He is coming off of three good games in a row, and he gets the matchup with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, since the their bye week, since the Jacksonville bye week, they are the third best matchup. Four fantasy quarterbacks. I am not concerned that that uh, Derrick Henry will transform into the Yeti and take everything away. I think that both Henry and Tannehill can have 
great games simultaneously. Well, it kind of reminds me last year, Ryan Fitzpatrick, what he did for fantasy playoffs and Ryan Tannehill for fantasy playoffs. And here's Kirk Cousins and Tannehill two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. fully endorsed here, just set up for success. I love it. David Montgomery is the start of the week at the running back position again against Houston this week. The Bears are in a tailspin. They've lost six straight games, and here's David Montgomery as a complete fantasy darling in the midst of it. Houston is the second uh, worst in football against the run, and David Montgomery has been this offense. He gets every opportunity. He gets tons of targets, and I think all of us here prefer Mitch Trubisky behind center, and uh, this is the redemption song for David Montgomery after disappointing people last year. He's been one of the best running runners in football despite all of our worst thoughts on watching this offense and I think he he dominates Houston yeah I I, I can't imagine not playing uh David Montgomery this week that's a great one I'm going with Bruce Wayne Gallman <laughs> he's at home with Arizona Cardinals traveling all the way to the east coast in an early matchup I think this is the week that you see Batman he's already been very consistent um, we brought it up earlier. Since Wait, this is the week? Well, no. I mean, you've already seen him That's have That's what I mean. Weeks. Yeah, but it, it it helped the narrative. I mean, don't you want to see Batman, Mike? I do. Well, I'm just saying this I week. I like Batman. You're going to see him. So uh, <laughs> he's been the running back six since week seven. Two out of the last three weeks, Cardinals given up a lot on the ground. I, I don't think they're going to travel well. Uh, and and uh, you're not going to have Daniel Jones, I don't think, as mobile if he's playing. So... Wayne Gallman in my lineup this week. I'm going with Johnny Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, the, the Colts rookie running back. Over the last month, the Las Vegas Raiders are the fourth best matchup for fantasy running backs. We've seen the opportunities over the last couple of weeks get back to a place of fantasy relevance. 16 opportunities, 26 opportunities for the, in the last couple of games for Jonathan Taylor. Looks like they are figuring things out in Indianapolis and making him making sure – that Jonathan Taylor gets his touches, and I like him in the matchup. All right, my wide receiver start of the week. I'm going right. with Debo Samuel against Washington. Debo okay. is too important to every play on this team. 13 targets, nine targets in the two games back from injury. And I'm doing this because Washington looks like on a total on-the-year basis like a bad matchup. But over the past five weeks, they are uh, one of the best for opposing fantasy wide receivers. They manufacture so many touches for Debo Samuel. I absolutely love him this week. And uh, a little bit of a like a distraction, I think, from his performance last week with Ayuk getting into the end zone. Debo didn't get into the end zone. I think both of them are interesting plays here, but I still prefer Debo and like him this week. I do. I, I, I like both of them. Yeah. I'm with you. Like, I saw you at Debo as your start of the week because uh, I strongly considered for my taking up to 100 player Brandon Ayuk yeah. to keep going. I, I like them both in that yeah. matchup. For wide receiver, I've got Amari Cooper at Cincinnati. It, it felt really bad when, when Dak went down and then Dalton Even worse went, for him. Yeah, and when, yeah. when Dalton went down, you had two terrible weeks without Dalton for Amari Cooper, then a bye week. So you had like a month where it just seemed like, man, I don't have this player anymore. But the truth is – Cooper's been very good with Dalton. In five games, started with Dalton. He's never finished below the wide receiver 32. And he's had two times where he's been a top 10 wide receiver. So you've got a baseline and upside. A matchup against Cincinnati is fantastic. Uh, I think Amari Cooper is going to have a great week. I'm going with Jarvis Landry from the Cleveland Browns. And you might be saying, the Ravens! But they're playing the Ravens! Three straight weeks, the Baltimore Ravens have given up top 10 production to fantasy wide receivers. In the two games without weather, without Odell Beckham that we have seen from Jarvis Landry, 37% of the targets. That is an absurd number. And Jarvis Landry is uh, great at playing football. You, you give a great wide receiver 37% of your targets, you're going to get a top, 12, or a top 20 wide receiver. And uh, this might be a good time to close your ears and just – Ignore the show for a second because I don't think you guys are going to like my pick at tight end. Hmm. I'm going to go with Jordan Akins. I'm going to take a deep shot at Jorkin a Jordan Akins again. I Jorkin? know. Jorkin. Jorkin Akins. Jorkin Akins. <laughs> uh, he led all tight ends in Houston in snaps last week. I know. I know the production hasn't been there yet since Will Fuller's suspension. 
but Chicago is a wonderful matchup for tight ends. They've given up nine touchdowns. They've given up top 12 tight end performances six consecutive weeks uh, and all but three games this year. They bleed out to the tight end position. And we know tight end is about process, and you hope for results. Mm -hmm. If you're going beyond the must-start tight ends, I want to do you a service this week and give you an option outside the must-start tight ends. I still think he is a deep play that could pay dividends this week. He runs a ton of routes. He was productive to start the year before he got hurt. He had two end zone targets two weeks ago, and it's going to take that touchdown to make this pay off, but I believe this is the game he comes through because Chicago gives up a touchdown to the tight end position almost every week. So I'm going to shoot my shot on this one. I realize it's high risk because the production hasn't been there the last two weeks, but I'm confident. Oh, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Well, thank you, Mike. I, I know Jason's not. I am not, but I hope for the best, and I pray that Darren Fells doesn't get that touchdown. Uh, at tight end, I'm going with Eric Ebron. Brought him up earlier um, in the conversation against Noah Fant. Man, if he could just catch the ball, he'd be unbelievable. Uh, he had three egregious <laughs> drops again this last week. It's kind of been his career. It's, it's been his, his career. career it's, not, it's not changing for week 14. But here's the, th the thing. With three egregious drops last week, he still had seven receptions, 11 targets. He's a must-start tight end. He, he had 11 targets the week prior and seven receptions the week prior. Buffalo is a great matchup on the season. Buffalo is the number three best matchup for fantasy points allowed above opponent's average. So, yeah, he's a must-start this week. The only question I have with Ebron is I've wondered if the, the involvement the last two weeks has been directly tied to having no running back because it does seem like they have no running back with that James Conner. But but Ebron has been getting so much work around the goal line. Both of these past two weeks could have been much bigger, and they were both pretty darn fine, so I like it. Yeah, and, and Ebron was one of those players we highlighted like going into the playoffs, the matchups for Ebron through the entirety of the fantasy playoffs are great. I ooh, I am also going with a I love this a bit of a riskier tight end here. I am going with Hayden Hurst from the Atlanta Falcons. Hayden Hurst, uh, it's, it's been hit or miss, mostly down, a few ups. Uh, but the good news for him, Julio Jones is back. It didn't work out for him last week. Didn't that, you make a Hayden Hurst joke? Oh yeah, okay, it, and it was hilarious. Yeah, it was good. But here's the thing against the Chargers. If you look at uh, look at like our stream finder tool on the fantasyfootballers.com. Any tight end who has is of any value to a an NFL team against the Chargers did something. Like you, you may you may look at the the on the season ranking of the Chargers and go, well, that's not a great matchup. But look at the players who actually hit against the Chargers, and Hayden Hurst is worth something. That is the me. question, isn't yes. it? Yeah, Hayden worth. Something. Something. <laughs> okay. All right. High praise. I love it. All right. Those were our starts of the week. One more very important, crucial playoff segment. I know the research has been doubly intense Super for deep. this one. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom kicker of the week. Ugh, scholars love the boom boom. They say I'm a glowy guy. So kick your opponents where it hurts with the Panthers' Joey Sly. Yeah, I mean, I like that one. Is glowy yeah. a word? I don't know what glowy means, but... Um, Radiant. <clears throat> oh, yeah. it's actually a word? Giving off steady light. Yeah. Glowy. Glowy. <laughs> Yeah, I well done. She's and then kick, uh, one of the Kardashians. Yeah, glowy Kardashian. Yeah, uh, kick them where they hurt. I mean, that's that's got double meaning. Oh yeah, because yeah. he's a kicker. Yeah, that's and then the also hole. like maybe right in the right in the ball, <laughs> where, which is where you want right him in the to, ball. That's where you want Joey Sly <laughs> to kick it is in the ball. Right. Yeah. No. Kick thanks him for right I'm, in that ball. I'm really glad I diagnosed that one live oh, and walked through it. Um, Joey Sly, then? Is that the pick? That's the pick. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Oh, boy. Look what Brooks found. A Drew Locke irresponsibly signed Broncos <laughs> Eclipse alternate speed helmet, $59. Calvin Ridley signed Falcons jersey, $55. Oh, my goodness. Hit that button. Somebody hit that button. Oh, for 55 Yeah. 55 I mean, it should have been me. But PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. 
Check them out. That'll do it for today's show. More matchups tomorrow. More injury updates. No more boom boom kickers on tomorrow's show, though. Oh, so that's too I'm bad. sorry. I apologize. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.